For the longest time, all I did was watch anime. But, you know, after getting that full-time job and wanting to be an intellectual, I wanted to read more manga slash webtoons in 2020. One of the webtoons that was highly recommended to me was Solo Leveling. <laughs> I'm not even kidding with you guys. One of my friends came over, made me open to chapter 1 of Solo Leveling, and forced me to read it with him looking over my shoulders. I'm getting PTSD flashbacks to my mom monitoring me during SAT prep. So after that FBI interrogation, out of my own free will, I decided to read the rest of the webtoon. And man, it was so good. I feel like there are so many good reasons why you guys should pick up this story. But before I give you guys my reasonings, let me give you guys a quick summary of what this story is about. Solo leveling takes place in a parallel universe in South Korea where there are these dungeons. Certain people of the general population get reawakened as hunters and these hunters go into these dungeons to hunt monsters and clear them. But here is the catch. The items that you acquire from these dungeons, such as the rare items and raw materials, could be resold for real money back in the real world of Korea. So because of this, you could only imagine the extent of political games and power dynamics that emerge around this new system. Now, our story begins with us following Chinwu, an E-rank hunter that goes into dungeons to pay off his sick mother's medical bills. It is also important to note that dependent on your rank and level, that equates to your economic level in the real world. Not only does Chinwu belong to the lowest rank, he is also deemed as the weakest hunter of all time. Like straight up, you see our mans struggling fighting off level 1 slimes. However, one day Jinwoo and one of his friends went along with a party to clear a D-rank dungeon. But what ended up happening was that this D-rank dungeon is actually a S-rank dungeon. <laughs> Man, Jinwoo has worse luck than the goddess Aqua. We soon learned that after the shit completely hit the fan, Jinwoo and his party gets tested by the S-rank boss. By the way, this boss's face gave me straight up nightmares. That was my face when they announced Reincarnated as a Slime Season 2. And now this comes upon my first reason why you guys should pick up this story. When it comes to solo leveling, there is always this sense of despair. Literally at one moment, a bunch of the characters are like, Yeah, let's grab some soju and eat some Korean barbecue after this trip. Then the next moment, it's like a McDonald meat factory. People get stepped on, vaporized, and grown as Korean men are crying. Which never happens because Korean men don't even cry at their mama's funerals. But this large contrast of kicking it with the boys to everybody kicking the bucket reminds me of the series Overlord, where characters assume they will clear the level, but the next thing you know, everybody is dead. I honestly love this sense of despair because it really keeps you on your toes. Because when it comes to solo leveling, nobody is safe. But now after, spoiler alert, Jinwoo surviving this S-class dungeon, he was able to acquire these skills that really helped him title drop solo level. What I really appreciated with this story was that they actually showed Jinwoo do some level grinding. Many series, they make their MCs built like Jesus himself. <clears throat> sort of online. But with solo leveling, they really showed you Jinwoo grinding it out to get it to the next level. Even though he may be getting stronger a lot faster than most players, you really feel like you're part of his journey of becoming Saitama. As Jinwoo gets a new rare item, beats a powerful dungeon boss, or learns a new skill, you feel both hyped and happy for him. And I think these feelings really have to do with the fact that he was so weak at one point and people were shitting on him all the time. One of the freaking amazing details I loved was that as Jinwoo was leveling up, his mental, physical, and even his overall aura completely changed. He turned from a neat nobody into a goddamn BTS K-pop star pulling bitches left and right. The third thing I loved about solo leveling was the whole factor of revenge. See, we Koreans, we love our revenge stories. Whether it's avenging your dead mom, your dead friends, your dead dog, and even your stolen boo mousepad, 
we better see some of that retribution. We learn very quickly in this world of hunters and dungeons. It works in the similar fashion of the real world in that the rich and powerful take complete advantage of the poor and weak. With this common thread with the real world in terms of economic oppression, Jinwu, who is deemed as the weakest hunter of all, truly gets the front row seat in the ugly nature of human greed. Now, where the revenge part of this equation comes in is after his experience in that S-Class dungeon, Jinwoo gets to power up to levels that are unheard of. But because Jinwoo is still registered as an E-Class hunter, most people think that he is weak as f So there is this one instance when a group of hunters trapped Jinwoo and one other person named Jinho. By the way, Jinho is the best case of somebody that thinks they are the main character and they straight up realize that they're the side character of the story. So after this group of hunters had their soldier break and came back, <laughs> their faces were priceless. And then these same hunters are like, yeah, let's just kill these people. Then Jinmu is like, nah, bitch, y'all the ones that are gonna die. So, you know, after seeing Jinmu getting disrespected over and over again, and seeing him completely turn the tables with his Saitama powers, I'm getting emotional on his behalf. But this satisfying revenge sequence happens over and over again, and I am all here for that barbaric savagery. The last point why I really think solo leveling is a good series is that there is no obnoxious romantic relationships or harems. Now, many of y'all must be surprised by this point and say, but Tony, you're supposed to have romance in a fantasy type series. Uh, no you're not. And especially after getting 10 million series where the main MC turns into a Mormon slash cult leader and creates a love decagon with 10 female characters, I very much appreciate solo leveling for going that non-romantic route. I feel like many of the times, romantic tropes are just thrown into these different fantasy series just because that's the only way to progress the story or if they just want to sell some extra merch. And don't get me wrong, I could appreciate a well-written romantic line in a fantasy series, but when a series like Solo Leveling takes a completely different route in the overly saturated romance trope in this genre, you gotta respect that effort. That still doesn't mean that our man's Jinwoo doesn't pull bitches. Man, he out here giving them the cold shoulder like a straight up killer. But hopefully these four points somehow sways you to pick up solo leveling because it is such a f***ing good series. And for the people that are currently reading or picking it up, please let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys for watching and let us all praise the Shadow Monarch Jinwoo-sama.